Greetings, Earthlings! Today I bring you six modern jazz licks you probably haven't heard, but are going to be crucial to understanding modern jazz drumming. If you, like me, have a love for drummers like Eric Harlan, Justin Brown, Damian Reed, and our boy Drummer Slams, you'll want to check this out. You're not going to see this in any drum book to my mind, and it's also not exactly verbatim what those players are playing. I've kind of worked it out for my own body and my own coordination and made some fun warm-ups out of it. Hope you enjoy it. Please stay tuned. My dudes, my dudes, gonna learn a lot of licks in this lesson, and I want you to know you do not have to transcribe them yourself. They've been transcribed for you, and it's free. You know the drill, click the link below the player, get your transcription, okay. Onto the first lick, our first lick is one that's inspired by the hi-hat coordination stuff I've been doing the last few weeks. It's gonna make a good warm up. I know you dig it, let's get it. So the first one is more like a warm up, although you could use parts of it as a real lick. Two, one, two, three, four. So this has two halves. Let me play the first half slowly. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. And if you're clever, and if you've got an eagle eye, you might recognize that as related to the lesson we did a few weeks ago on independence with hat on every eighth, or in this case, every quarter. And one of the exercises I would do was I would set up a matrix between the left foot and the right hand where the left foot was on downbeats, the right hand was either on 16th offbeats or eighth offbeats, and then I would have other stuff going on in between. This is a real staple of modern jazz playing if you listen to people like Damian Reed and Eric Harland. <laughs> So it's a good one to practice. Second half. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So let's put these both together now. Two, one, two, three, four. And if you really want to get inside the head of some of those modern drummers, you'll practice it faster. Two, three, four. And of course, once you know this, you can improvise with it. So you're not just using it in that rote kind of way, you're applying it to other things. And that's the first lick. Okay, so that was our first lick. Now I wonder what Drumnade has in store for us for lick number deuce. So the second lick goes like this. Two, one, two, three, four. Let me pull it a little slower. Two, one, two, three, four. So 
So this leverages the thing we talked about in Lick One, and also one of my favorite things, which I call hemiola, which is not really hemiola, but I just stole that word. But essentially, it means taking a phrase and instead of playing it in four beat increments so that it equals four, eight, sixteen, you play it in two three beat increments and a two beat increment. So three plus three plus two, or six plus six plus four, still equal eight and sixteen respectively. So instead of something like three, four. Symmetrical four beat patterns, you do that thing where you break it up into two groups of three and a group of two. So it'll be three, four. So the six beat, three, four. It's followed by another six beat, three, four. And then it's followed by a four beat, three, four. You add those up, eight equals 16 beats, three, four. That's like number deuce. Okay, so that was our second lick. I wonder what Drumnate has in store for lick number. <laughs> So the third lick goes like this. One, two, three, four. So obviously there are two halves to this. This is ultimately related to the first one where we're just going. Right, so now we're working rim shots into the pattern on the offbeats, and this is definitely something you'll hear folks like Justin Brown. And Drummer Slams do, if you don't know who Drummer Slams is, that's on you, you need to be on Instagram. Actually, you don't. But since you're already on Instagram, just look up Drummer Slams. You'll know who it is. First half. One, two, three, four. It almost sounds like a meters bridge from Ziggy Motto East, right? Right? It's funky even when you slow it down. Okay, let's look at the second part. You're only adding a couple of triplets to shift the feel to this sort of implied Elvin 12 8 thing, but it's really funky. Three, four. Do it a little slower. Three, four. And that's, I believe, the third lick. I'm going to start to lose count. Okay, so that was lick number two. Getting down to it, only three more. So we're in the bottom half of the ninth. We're on the back nine. Let's see what lick four is all about. So number four goes two, three, four. Basically the second half of this is just me vamping, playing time. The business end of this lick is. Of course you can do a lot of creative stuff where you can permutate it like David Garibaldi. You can start it on pretty much any part of the beat. I'm literally starting with the first beat of it on the downbeat. Doesn't have to be that way. It could be three, four. I just happen to be playing it three, four. 
So putting the first and second half together, because it is important to get in and out of these licks without being messy. So here we go. Three, four. It's a great one to use anytime you're trying to escalate the tension behind a soloist, like third or fourth chorus in, he or she's throwing some stuff at you, you want to respond with some Elvin, it's a great one. Now wasn't that a nice little rim shoddy thingy? I think it was. Pretty sure it was. Anyway, on to lick. <laughs> Sank. So the fifth lick is kind of an Eric Harlan thing that works really well at slow tempos. Here it is. One, two, three. Business end of this is just this. One, two, three. Two, three. Two, three. Even slower. Two, three. Two, three. Two, three. And that's the lick. I just arbitrarily put some stuff around it for you to practice. But you can be playing. Another thing Eric does a lot is he'll do that several times, like. He'll even do it three times in a row, like. And the way you'll do that is just two, three, four, one, two. Two, three, four, one, two. That's an easy place for you to start the lick where you'll end on a downbeat. Two, three, four, one, two. That's an easy place for you to start the lick where you'll end on an upbeat. It'll sound like Elvin. Two, three, four, one, two. Two, three, four, one, two. If you're looking for a tasteful place to bust out your singles, that's a good one. This has been Lick 5. And that was the fifth lick in our sixth and final lick. You guys won't believe it, I'll blow your drum minds. But before we even get there, another reminder. You've seen a lot, you've probably laughed, you've probably cried, you've probably, hopefully, had your sense of meter turned inside out and started to question everything you took for granted about yourself. I know I did. Anyway, before we complete the trifecta, sexfecta? Before we complete the sexfecta, <gasps> Quick reminder about your free, complimentary is that redundant, transcription download below the player. Click that link, enter your email address in on the next page, and you'll get that transcription free. You don't have to transcribe it yourself. All right, on to the sixth and final <laughs> lick. One, two, one, two, three. This one's definitely the most advanced of the bunch in terms of how to understand it. So let me just play it more slowly. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. In my efforts to demonstrate, I, I messed it up. But anyway, that lick is two, three, four. Four, one, two, three, four. So it's a really simple lick. Right, left, left, right, left, and you left on the rim shot. But when you play it in that context, it sounds unbelievably hip. You'll definitely hear people like Eric Harlan, Damian Reed, Obed Calvair. It kind of lends itself to match grip more than traditional grip. Let's play it one more time. Two, three, four. So the, f the first part, 
And then the second part is a little bit counterintuitive, is this, two, three, four. Two, three, four. But it's got this really nice jazz eighth dance to it, so. Right, you can just, it's piping, right? Okay. So that's number six. Hopefully you've dug these. And here's the thing I like about them. They're like my slant on some stuff the greats are doing. So we're not verbatim copying stuff like the flurries lesson. We're inspired by stuff other people are doing. We're pivoting it. We're putting it through the filter of our own muscle memory. So I encourage you, I want you to take these, experiment with them on your own, come up with your own variations. But these are six kind of kernels of modern jazz drumming that I don't hear discussed a lot. Anyway, that's how you get the gig. <laughs> Gents, it's been real. Those six slick jazz licks that you need to know to play modern jazz. I think you'll dig them. Try them out, incorporate them into your playing. And dudes, hope you've enjoyed this one. I'll be back real soon with another lesson of the I bloody had a noof. Oof, it's getting really uh, stufe in here. See, you guys don't know what I put up with. So, hey, everyone. Hey, somebody bought my course.